which uh, validates everything that we've said about Tom Thibodeau when he was hired as a coach, that it was going to be defense first and then it was going to be offense. And uh, lo and behold, who is the number one defensive team in the NBA? The New York Knicks. <laughs> you damn straight, man, which is amazing, which is truly amazing. And, you know, the guys have bought in to what he's selling. They're beating teams that they're supposed to beat, which is nice. This is uh, these are these are games that they would have lost in the past. They sure. would have been blown out. Somebody would have been sleepwalking through a game. Uh, but he's not going to let them ha- let that happen. As I was, as I was reading about uh, Derek Rose talking about Tom Thibodeau and and how you know he is meticulous in his preparation. He is uh, constantly r- reminding the players it's about home court advantage in the playoffs. You know all these different things that the players are buying into, and it starts with Julius Randle uh, and the way that he came back in shape this year. Uh, I think they, you know, most coaches will tell you you got to have players in order to win. And then you put in a system that fits those players, and hopefully those players buy in. And then the trade for Derrick Rose has really turned out to be really good because Dennis Smith, even as good as he's played for Detroit, is just not the, was not the player that was going to fit here for whatever reason. But I still think Derrick Rose may be playing a little bit too much with Alfred Payton out. He's playing over 30 minutes now. And when you think about that, when they first got him here, they were thinking, let's 23 minutes or less. Just simply, we don't want to put a lot of pressure on the knees and all that other stuff. Um, and even Emmanuel quickly, you know, his numbers and time on the court have diminished the last couple of days, the last couple of games. And you say to yourself, well, you know, I want to see this guy playing. He should be out there playing. Hey, the coach knows whether or not the guy deserves to play. That's really what it comes down to. And like I told you last week, and I still believe this, the coach at the end of the day, the coach wants to win. You know, when, when they put him to rest, they're going to put his record on his tombstone. And every coach in every sport, regardless of how young the team is, regardless of trying to get guys into the lineup and trying to develop young guys, no matter what sport it is, that coach cares about winning first and foremost. Yeah, I was dead wrong about Tom Thibodeau when I first heard his name being the favorite for the Knicks coach. I was just thinking about a guy who burns out his players and he's just going to grind these guys down. It's not going to work. He's going to be out of here quick and the players aren't going to. The message won't resonate with them. It's a coach of the past. You need somebody different. I was wrong about all of that. He has been great in that restoring of the pride, restoring of the Knicks, and all these things that he's trying to do this year so far has been successful. Now, I'm going to continue to enjoy these moments, but of course, I've got concerns about sustainability. You know, I don't want this team to just give us a good first half and then totally fall off the face of the earth. I mean, that would be disappointing, but every day that goes by, I'm more and more confident in this team finishing the job and getting themselves into a first round playoff series. Now, I know that they're fourth in the conference now, but they're also a game and a half and you know, away I'm from 12th. being 10th or whatever, oh, yeah. 12th in the conference. So, I mean, th- there is definitely a lot of a logjam there in the Eastern Conference. But, but yeah, I mean, for this moment, you could not have scripted it any better. And yesterday, too, and last night against the Pistons, and I know the Pistons are terrible, trust me. They're so bad. There's a lot of guys on that team. Who cares? I they hate you. Who cares? Well, then, then they blew them out, and they were supposed to. I know. Right. But it is part of the story. But... R.J. Barrett, aggressive, confident. That was something I need to see every night from him, and he certainly was last night. So there, there's just so much to like. It's fun. It gives you something if you're a Knicks fan that you haven't had in a very long time, which is anticipation and pride, which are two things that I hadn't thought about with the Knicks. It's been very long. Anticipation for the next game and pride in when they play. And when you turned the game on last night, I fully expected them to win. Oh, sure. Fully even even on a back-to-back, it didn't but, matter. And, yeah. and, and, and the reason I say that is because you, what you see is you actually see effort and hustle and defense, rebounds, uh, sharing the basketball, quality shooting. Last night it happened to be R.J. Barrett. He finally, you know, he had one of his wake-up games. Like, now he may go into the tank the next two games. Who knows? Uh, but the, the I, I, for me anyway, just just the effort – Honestly, is nice to see, and the expectation to win a game. I, you know, when was the last time we can actually say that? I, I you know, maybe it was that fifty-four win season when Carmelo was here. That's probably it. Yeah, I, I mean, but even that, even that season, I don't know. Just, it just didn't end right. <laughs> just well, I mean, the thing about that season was, all right. So the the Knicks were good, but you realize that they had no shot at winning a title. Now, 
that's the the same sort of way that you feel about this team. But the problem was with that team was, you know, they were going to make it to the playoffs, but they were going to run into a brick wall. Right now, the Knicks are building something, and they're giving you something with a bunch of young guys, well, mostly young guys, uh, that you haven't felt in a while. I guess you, know, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself because I was thinking last night and in, in, in about this game and where they are and then thinking, you know, they could drop out – quickly and and maybe this is a situation at the end of the season we're talking about wow the Knicks were good for a one half of the season and then were terrible but the thing I start thinking about now is what is the next step like what well you know Le- Leon Rose and everybody that he's assembled there and Scott Perry is still there like how do you go and get that next great player who is that next great player and how do the Knicks then compete on the level that we all want them to see, but it, that's getting ahead of ourselves. But uh, the fact that we're here at this point is is a borderline miracle, quite frankly, that they're over 500 after 35 games for only the third time in 20 well, years. Well, the interesting thing is, is do we add a player or two to help bolster our chances at the playoffs? I, you know, that's that's where they're sitting. And don't think for a moment that Leon Rose and Jim Dolan and Worldwide West – and Steve Stout and Scott Perry. I mean, there's like a thousand guys over there that are sure. running this thing now. Um, don't think for a minute that they do not want to go to the playoffs. They oh, want to go to the sure. playoffs. They want to win. They want to have a quality product. They want their fans to show up and enjoy the basketball game as opposed to coming to see somebody else play. They want the fans to come and watch the Knicks play. So if they just keep giving effort like this, they're going to be fine. I mean, that's, that's all I, I you could ever ask for for any athlete. It's just give me effort, and that's what they're giving you. So I I don't know. Derrick Rose has been a like kind of like a – he's been reborn here. <laughs> I still think he's playing maybe a little bit too much. But when Alfred Payton comes back, maybe those numbers will, will slide a little bit uh, back to normal. But, you know, the last couple of games he's been spot on. He's been great. And I, I said last week, you know, he looked great. And then I looked at their schedule, and I was telling you, you know, over the next nine games – Give me a six and three or a seven and two, and they're on their way to doing that. Yeah, which would be that would be one hell of a stretch for them. I mean, seven out of nine. If why that's not, something. It, yeah, at this point, why not? I mean, it it is. It's incredible to see them as fourth in the conference ahead of teams like the Celtics, Miami, the Raptors. Now, I, I just I know that it's very very condensed, but that's a fact. They so right now have the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference as we approach the All Star game. Well, that's what happens when you have a coach that has a track record. Yeah, and then he steps in there, and he's been here before, so he knows about the Knicks, and he knows about when the Knicks were good, and he knows what it's like, uh, you know, to play in front of fans who appreciate great basketball. So I think that's what he is, kind of like the message to them is like, you put that jersey on. You know, with that jersey comes responsibility, and responsibility first and foremost on this basketball team is going to be defense, and that's why I, you know they are the number one defensive team in the league. Yeah, I mean their commitment oh, to it yes. has been I mean, it, it, it never ending. I mean, it's not like you've barely had that game where they've mailed it in on the defensive level every single night. You feel like they're they're showing up with that commitment. So that that's why I do feel like it'll continue. I don't think they'll end up fourth. Uh, when the season is over in the conference, but uh, give us a playoff series. Yeah, how about they get Mitchell Robinson back? How about they make a trade, bring somebody else? I mean, yeah. like, uh, Nerlens Noel has been like a little bit of a revelation. I mean, he's been playing really well. Uh, uh, Julius Randle just continues to, to put up points. He didn't get a double-double last night. He was close. Uh, and Derrick Rose has been a nice little. But, you know, the other the other question that I will ask and I know that we've talked about this. Like, what is the ultimate future for this team? Like, who is who are the next group of guys that are going to be added to this group that are going to be able to get them over the the Brooklyn net? Well, that, Let's face it. I, there's just there's no way. There's well, just, no, there's just no way. Well, we we understand that there are teams that are they're going to crush the Knicks in a postseason series. We understand that. Uh, there are you know head and shoulder teams that are better. The Nets are one of them. There's no doubt about it. Um, so this isn't the year they're going to win a championship, the Knicks, that's for sure. Uh, but if they can give you a playoff series and compete in that playoff series, you know, maybe even, you know, take it to a game six or seven in that first round. I mean, that's something that, that you will take every time with a team that we didn't even know if they'd win over 25 games this year at first. We had no idea what we were going to have, especially the way the, the last year went. 
and I was one year off from this team being actually a team to be proud of. I thought it was well, going to be you know, last you year. You didn't expect Julius Randle to come in like he did this well, year. Well, I did last year. Well, last year, but he didn't. And he didn't. That and was the thing. Year, and then this year he came back completely, lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. And all of a sudden now looks like, you know, an MVP candidate. Well, that well that was the <laughs> I know. Well, that was the thing last year I was saying. This guy's going to be an all-star. He's going to be great. He's the most talent, probably the most talented Nick player that they've had in a number of years. Then he was bad last year, and then this year he came back and he was he was very very good. But yeah, of course that's the next question. I mean, I don't you know who is going to be the person that comes here and how to team up with Julius Randle because there's no way in hell you're getting rid of him at this point. No way in hell. You can't you? Well, you and and you shouldn't. You just should not. So I know that going into the year was like ah Julius Randle's a player that. He should go somewhere else. He should go to a contender. He's not. I mean, he has been their best player. Is what everybody looks up to in that locker room. He sets the standard every night. He's representing the Knicks in the All Star game. You could not ask for more. You you cannot trade that guy or even think about trading that guy at this point. I'm sorry, that ship has sailed. So now you build around him. But who do you get rid of if it's a trade? Who do you bring in if it's free agency? Those are things that that are going to be very, very tough. But the first step was to restore relevancy with the franchise. I Nobody think, had done I, that. Know, I, think, I think for me right now, the, the untouchables are Barrett, Quickly, Robinson. Toppin? Yeah, it has to be Toppin. Uh, you also have to throw Julius Randle in there. And everybody else after that, you know, everybody else after that is expendable, sure. tradable. Um, trying to rebuild, trying to hit on the draft like a quickly, you know, like they hit with quickly. So you know, I, I, the NBA is tough, man. The NBA is tough to get to the top. You see what the Nets have done to get to the top? Sure. All the mani- manipulation, all the movement, all the money that has been spent. I mean, I, you know, the Knicks would have done that if they could. Yeah, if players wanted to play there. Maybe they do now. Who knows? Well, that, right. So they, they everybody talked about why... Players and free agents didn't want to come to the Knicks. You know, was it Jim Dolan? Was it the fear of failing in the New York spotlight? And to me, it was mostly because the team was terrible, and there was no, there was nothing to build around. So why a star? You know, you could think about all right, two stars coming there and changing things, but it just was a, it felt like a bad situation to join. Doesn't feel like that any longer. You know why? Because the coach has restored order. Yeah. That's why. Like you know. You play for a guy that actually can draw an out of bounds play. You mm. could you could play for a guy that you know makes you pay attention to the videotape when you're watching it about the next upcoming opponent and giving you a scouting report. And this is how we're going to build them. That that's how you rebuild. And you know guys have have guys have to have success under the coach for the coach to have the credibility to coach the guys hard and to sit them down when they make a mistake or if they're not ready yet or if he if he knows that they're hitting the wall or something. And I know that he's probably got a little bit of frustration with Quickly and Toppin, but they're young kids. They'll learn the game. They'll figure it out. It's going to take a while. And, you know, Quickly has shown more uh, in the in the short period of time that he's been here than any rookie that I can remember coming in here. Yeah, I, I know that there are some people out there that are critical of some of his rotations and like to see this guy more, that guy Forget more. That you, the, I mean, I, I am not one of those guys because I think he's squeezed out every ounce of this roster. And you can't tell me that – you know, this team could be that much better if it went a different way. But he knows, he knows when the guy is not doing the right thing on the basketball court. He knows if there's a rotational defensive uh, situation and the guy is not getting where he's supposed to be. He sees that. He realizes that. And maybe it's because the guy doesn't know. Maybe he's not paying attention. And that kind of frustrates the coach. The coach is going to say, well, the only time you're going to get minutes on the basketball court is when you earn them. And it's not just about points. You have to play defense. And it also could be, a, you know, an offensive player, too, that we would know as fans as we're watching it that maybe the guy is not making the right move or make, making what he's – or doing what he's supposed to be doing. The, the coach knows that. And the coach is not afraid to sit a guy down. So I, it drives me crazy when I hear people say, well, i got to see more of this guy. we gotta, we got to work him out more. He's got to play 30 minutes a night. And I'm like, wait, if, if, let's say Emmanuel quickly played 30 minutes a night. You might end up losing by 15 points a night. Sure. So what he's trying to do, he's trying to bring along these young guys where he can, but he wants to win, and he wants to get this team to the playoffs. That is the most important thing 
The second most important thing is then bringing the young kids along. So I, I like what he's doing. As long as they're winning and as long as they're relevant, then he's the reason why. And you gotta, you have to defer to his decision making about the way he's going to do his rotation. Well, you the fact to. that they're a winning team right now, you have to. That you rest your case if you're Tom Thibodeau. All right, Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.